Hi, I'm Paweł Spechalski and today let's try to find the answer to the question that is quite often asked during my live stream. Which flight controllers do I recommend and which flight controllers, well, are a good investment for the future so we can be sure that in the year or two they will rather not die and no longer be supported. And I have to honestly admit that in the last year, year and a half, the answer to this question actually changed in my opinion. Uh, but we will go to that, uh, that part slightly later. First of all, let's understand one thing. In 2021 and even in 2020, buying anything that's equipped with the STM32F3 processor is just a huge mistake. No matter how cheap those things are, never absolutely ever even used one by F3s. Why? Because Betaflight is already not supporting them and the INAV is supporting F3s. Um, 2.6 is the last INAV that supports those flight controllers. So F3, no, 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 no. Absolutely Absolutely not. Then we have F4s. And in case of F4s, basically buy anything you want. That is F405. Yes, there is also this ser series of small flight controllers from the F411 series. And here, well, they are small for a reason and they are cheap for a reason. It's not that they will die immediately, but if anything will be happening to the F4 series of the flight controllers, the F411s will be probably the first one to suffer from the limitations. So, if you really want to have something super small, then yes, go with F411, like for example those small uh, flight controllers for flying wings by Matex, but then you do have to remember that they are limited for a reason. Yes, they are cheap, they are small, because their functionalities are reduced, they do not have a lot of serial ports, do not have an inversion, and so on, and so on, and so on. In case of 405, this is absolutely not a problem, they have plenty of ports, plenty of RAM, plenty of flash, and will work just fine. More than that, the sense of buying F405 increased in the last few years because SBUS, who uses SBUS really like inverted protocol with SBUS, it's something like we definitely are stopping to be using, not because most of the new radio systems are no longer SBUS oriented. Yes, you can use them with SBUS, but this is not the goal. And also basically the same thing is happening with the smart port. I think all modern uh, receiver protocols that you use to connect to your receiver are right now non-inverted. Crossfire not inverted, Ghost not inverted, Tracer not inverted, even the latest F port from the FreeSky is no longer inverted. And thanks to that, the F405 in 2021 makes sense again, as long as you really do not want to use it with the SBUS. So that's that's the future on the F405s. And because they can also run with Ardu Pilot and have that much of the flash of the RAM, they will stay with us for, for quite, quite, quite long. Now, F7s. F7s two years ago had a huge advantage over F405s and F4 in the in general because every single one F7 has built inverters on every serial port. So inverted, not inverted, SBUS, not SBUS, Crossfire, you connect anything you want to anything you want and it's just working great. However, the same situation that uh, helped F405s to become a good choice for 2021 is also not so good, not a good thing for the F7s. Because with all the modern radios, um, you do not really need inverted serial ports. Sure, if you are planning to use smart port or SBUS, then rather F7 is a better option. But if not, then it's really only absolutely up to you to pick whatever you want. And uh, F7 is not really that much faster, or rather even maybe it's slightly slower than the F405. So, you know, you know how it is. The situation just changed in the last few years. But F7s are actually divided into several different F7s. 
and there is absolutely not a problem of getting yourself f745 or f765 However, there is a small problem with the F722, those smallest and the cheapest series of flight controllers equipped with the F7 MCUs. The problem of the F722 is that F722s have limited flash size. They have only 15, no, 512 kilobytes or kilobits, I'm honestly not even, kilobytes, of the flash memory. And because of that, um, they cannot run ArduPilot, because just ArduPilot requires uh, you more. And uh, iNav, with iNav, with the latest iNav 2.0, Seven, we will have to slightly change the default optimization on the F7, F7 tutus and slightly make them slightly slower to fit all the functionalities inside. And Betaflight already had to do it in their latest uh, Betaflight 4.3. I think they already had to lower the optimization level on the F7 tutu only to be able to compile. Does it mean they are bad option? Not really, because they are still capable of running 8 kHz mode in the beta flight. And uh, because INAV does not really suggest you to run 8 kHz mode, but at least 4 kHz or 2 kHz, they are fast enough to run 4 kHz and 2 kHz without absolutely any problems. And they are cheap, they are small, and they have inverters everywhere, so there is still a sense to get yourself F722 in the 2021. And to be honest, the majority of my fleet is actually F722s, and I'm not really worried about having be them being obsolete in the next year or two. However, they are not really 100% future-proof MCUs. Only because that they are slowly running out of space and in the year or two there might be a, f a need to cut features on them. They are now slightly slower than they were before, but it's not that they are making, this is making them fly worse. So it's not really a bigger deal. And I have one, two, three, I think four f 7 tutus right now. One F745 and everything else is F4 and I see no problem from up to updating from f 7 tutus to anything better. So you are still safe. And finally, we go to a series called the H7. And uh, yeah, I think the problem of the H7s, we will have to move to the separate video. Right now, I cannot really recommend them for, get, for buying and for using because you do not really get anything comparing to F745 or F765 and even they are not much uh, better than F405. Yes, they may be faster, but it's not that... They are not so much faster than in, in, for using them for beta flight, for example, you will notice absolutely any difference. Because if you are, for example, running the 8 kHz mode, it doesn't matter if the MCU finishes all the computations in 50 microseconds or 100 microseconds. As long as it's below 120, 25 microseconds, you are golden and there is absolutely no reason to go with H7. Yes, Yes, in the future, in the future, H7 will make sense when we will go to H745 series, I think, the one that has two cores, not one, like the ones that we are using right now, and the flight firmware will learn how to use those two cores, for example, to have the basic functions on the one of the cores, and super fancy advanced prediction filtering on the second core. But this is a song of really like a future, two, three years and from my perspective right now in the 2021 it just doesn't make sense to get yourself an H7 because the speed difference is not something you can really feel because it's 8 kilohertz and it's still 8 kilohertz and the fact that it really computes the co finish the finishes the computations a few microseconds earlier than the anything else that really absolutely makes no sense and they are more expensive so 
yeah it's really hard to make, recommend them right now next year who knows we will know but they are definitely not something to be recommended in the beginning of the 2021 and uh, i of course skipped the f1 series because they are long dead and i also skipped the g4 series because really honestly i don't know okay thank you very much for watching this is all for today thank you very much and until the next one bye bye